Now, Iran has admitted its military shot down a Ukrainian passenger jet by accident, killing all 176 people on board. The plane crashed shortly after takeoff from Tehran on Wednesday, after Iran fired missiles targeting U.S. forces based in Iraq. Western countries had been piling pressure on Iran, which had spent days denying that it was responsible for the crash. Well, Iran's Foreign Minister Javed Zarif tweeted this. A sad day. Preliminary conclusions of internal investigation by armed forces. Human error at time of crisis caused by U.S. adventurism led to disaster. Our profound regrets, apologies and condolences to our people, to the families of all victims and to other affected nations. Well, we'll go live to Rob Reynolds in Washington, D.C. for us in a moment, but let's begin with Asad Beg in Tehran. Asad, this admission, as we're saying, comes after days of denial. So why are we hearing this now? Well, we've had denials for days now. The Iranian government said that it was false. Uh, false, uh, false. They said that uh, the United States was spreading lies. The government spokesman here said uh, that the United States and its friends were rubbing salt in the wounds of the uh, families uh, families of the victims. Uh, but there had been governments around the world, Canada, United States, that said that they had intelligence uh, that the airline was shut down by a missile. We also had the New York Times release a video that showed a projectile, which we now know to be a missile, go up into the air and strike the aircraft. The aircraft then caught fire and crashed to the ground. We had several videos. But we had denials upon denials. The head of the aviation authority here said that it was scientifically impossible and illogical that it was shut down by a missile. They said everything was false rumors. Uh, the foreign ministry spokesperson accused Western media of suspicious propaganda. Now, there's going to be many questions that the government here has to answer. The general uh, staff of the military has said that the IRGC, that's the Revolutionary Guard, will have to go on state TV to explain to the Iranian people mm. what happened. We've had uh, President uh, uh, of Iran, Hassan Rouhani, to say that this is an unforgivable uh, mistake uh, and uh, they will continue to investigate. So there's a lot of explaining to do by the authorities here. But also, why did they deny it for so long, even after the head of the aviation authority said that there was coordination between the civil and military sectors? Why did they accuse uh, Western governments of lying? Why did they say that the Western media was uh, engaging in propaganda? But more importantly, why did they not close down the airspace over Iran, over Tehran? Why did they not grant flights hours after mm. Iran had struck U.S. targets in Iraq and they were expecting uh, that the United States may retaliate? Asad, as you're saying, lots of explanations still required. But what kind of fallout could we be seeing from this, both at home and abroad? Well, the Iranian government has had unprecedented support recently after the assassination of Qasem Soleimani. They've seen a surge in support. Hundreds of thousands of people have been out on the streets uh, for the funeral procession. And we've seen a country very much united behind the political establishment and the government. But now there will be uh, shock. Uh, people will be waking up this morning uh, shocked at uh, this news uh, where the government is actually admitting that they shot down a plane where many Iranians, over 100 Iranians, died in that crash. And remember in 1988, uh, the US Navy shot down an Iranian airliner, which is still fresh in the memory of Iranians. 290 people died. President Hassan Rouhani actually quoted that number in a tweet to Donald Trump uh, not long ago. So I think the main fallout for Iran will be domestically, uh, but also internationally, it's deeply embarrassing for Iran because they spent so so days denying that they had shut down uh, the missile. They had made public statements uh, on all levels of government. The government spokesperson uh, issued a statement. The foreign ministry spokesman issued a statement. The head of the aviation authority came on TV denying uh, that they had shut this, uh, shut this airline down. Uh, and it's deeply embarrassing uh, for the Iranian government internationally. Asad Beg there for us live from Tehran. Thank you, Asad. Well, even before that announcement from Iran, Canada's government had been pressing for its crash investigators to be allowed in. We repeat our call for a full and thorough investigation. We have a team of officials from Global Affairs Canada 
and the transportation safety board in place in Ankara, in Turkey. To date, the Iranians have issued two visas, and we expect the other visas will be granted soon, so we can begin providing consular services, help with the identification of the victims, and obviously participate in the investigation. Well, let's go to Rob Reynolds, who's in Washington, D.C. Rob, as we've just been hearing there, the Canadians have been very vocal, especially given the number of their citizens on board that plane. Does this admission mean that they're more likely to be given access that they've been pushing for? Uh, that's possible. That is, of course, up to the authorities in Iran. And uh, I, I mean, one could imagine that uh, the authorities in Iran will be somewhat abashed now by this uh, admission that uh, after days of denials that uh, their forces were responsible. So um, that is certainly something that, that may occur. Um, another interesting point uh, regarding the U.S. and Canada, I think, uh, is, is one to watch for. Uh, of course, we just heard as you have just reported, uh, the Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif uh, sort of obliquely blaming the United States for the shooting down of the Ukrainian airliner um, by, by saying it was a result of a crisis set in motion by U.S. adventurism, i.e. the assassination of General Qasem Soleimani. Um, one could certainly argue that the U.S. Uh, action was uh, at the root of the whole series of events that mm. eventually resulted in the downing of the aircraft, uh, perhaps an illustration of the law of intend unintended consequences, if you will. Uh, but I'm sure that the American officials, the U.S. Uh, uh, president and his uh, senior officials will push back against any implication that the U.S. was to blame in any way for this. But I think it's a, it's a subject that has come up in Canada uh, in a press conference by uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on uh, Thursday. Uh, he was pressed by uh, uh, Canadian journalists about the degree to which the United States uh, and its actions had played a role in this eventual tragedy that claimed the lives of 63 Canadian citizens. So I think that's something to watch for, to see how this affects U.S.-Canadian relations. U.S.-Iranian relations, on the other hand, couldn't really be much worse short of all-out war, which thankfully seems to have been averted. Uh, but nevertheless, the U.S. has piled on more sanctions today on the Iranian government, uh, sanctioning eight senior leaders in the government in Tehran, as well as the Iranian metals industry. Uh, this uh, uh, just the latest in a series of, of uh, very heavy sanctions the United States has placed on Iran. Hmm. Rob Reynolds there for us in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Rob. Well, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has just tweeted, saying the armed forces' internal investigation has concluded that, regrettably, missiles fired due to human error caused the horrific crash of the Ukrainian plane and deaths of 176 innocent people. Investigations continue to identify and prosecute this great tragedy and unforgivable mistake. Well, joining us now from Albuquerque in the U.S. state of New Mexico is Alan Deal. He's a former National Transportation Safety Board and U.S. Air Force investigator. Alan, let's start with this whole admission of human error. Human error bringing down a passenger jet of this size. This was a, this was a missile. Talk us through the technicalities of this. Well, I, um, my specialty is human factors. Uh, I'm an aviation psychologist, and uh, I happen to have looked at Russian equipment uh, at least in one other accident, I'm investigating a fratricide that involved the U.S. Air Force. So we do see human error. Uh, it's not real common in these uh, fratricides, but it does uh, it does occur. So I, uh, from what I've read, and I don't know that the Iranians have identified the type of missile battery, but we certainly know that uh, much of the ergonomics, uh, the human factors of the equipment can be confusing. We also don't know about the training of the operators. So mm. it may, may well be this high state of readiness and uh, the fact that everybody is expecting some sort of retaliation from the U.S. that uh, some low-level operator sitting in a missile battery control uh, miss, well, saw a blip and launched the missile at it because uh, they assumed it was some sort of hostile vehicle. Or uh, we know that in some cases, this equipment has a 
basically a launch on detect capability, hmm. automated launch capability. So there's a lot we don't know. Hopefully the Iranians will fill in blanks. And uh, I can tell you that in the past I've had to defend uh, uh, U.S. Air Force personnel who were involved with fratricides because oftentimes it's the system or the equipment or the command and control hmm. uh, structure that really is at the root cause of it. Alan, you say that it could have been mistaked potentially by someone for a hostile jet, but this was a commercial jet that took off just minutes earlier from an Iranian airport in its own airspace, presumably still under Iranian air traffic control. So how does someone make an error like that? How does that happen? Well, you, you, you realize these, these operators, these missile battery operators are looking at a radar scope. They're probably not out there with binoculars. They're probably not talking to the air traffic controllers. So all they know is there's a blip that suddenly appears on their radar scope and uh, they have to make a decision mm -hmm. what to do with it. Uh, well, uh, where the missiles had been launched a few hours earlier, I'm, I'm sure those operators were expecting retaliation, perhaps a U.S. reconnaissance air, aircraft, mm -hmm. perhaps a cruise missile. But they, they, I'm sure, didn't know that this was an airliner. We saw this in the Malaysia uh, 17 shoot down uh, uh, over uh, the Ukraine uh, in uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. So uh, this this is not uncommon. We saw this in the U.S. Navy 1988 mm. when we uh, U.S. Navy shot down the Iranian Airbus uh, over the Persian Gulf. So this is not uncommon. Now, a lot of times these operators don't have all the information and they have to make life or death decisions in what is basically a potentially a war zone. So, Alan, let me ask you then, because you're saying that this does happen, but Tehran has spent days denying this. Are we seeing this admission now because they've been painted into a corner, so to speak, by the evidence? We've seen this New York Times video of this projectile, and they've had to release these black boxes to the Ukrainians. Are the Iranians admitting this because they have had no choice? I think so. Uh, clearly, the U.S. Uh, military detected the uh, plumes of two missiles being fired now. That's been announced. Uh, they said they saw one explosion. Uh, we've all seen the picture of what appears to be an inta a relatively intact. It's uh, a crashed missile. So maybe the, the second missile didn't explode. It was uh, supposedly in a garden. And you can see the radar antenna and the missile itself largely intact. Uh, so that, that all fits with the evidence. So I, I would imagine the Iranian finally decided we're going to have to give it up. Uh, they've got pictures of the shrapnel, mm. penetration, metal, uh, the fuselage, et cetera. And so I, I think you're right. Uh, you're right on. The Iranian government must have decided that uh, they're going to have to release uh, everything. So we might as well fess up now and try to blame the United States for uh, causing the situation that led to the unfortunate mm. uh, down. Tragic though it is, uh, they, uh, they, I doubt if they will... Uh, take full responsibility, they'll probably attempt mm. to shift the blame to the United States. Alan Deal there, a, a U.S. Air Force investigator. Thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera, Alan.